Though there are there is some animatronics. There's everything you could possibly wish for. Jurassic World Rebirth just got confirmation from Jonathan Bailey on some animatronic dinosaurs being included in the new movie. For the last few films, believe it or not, we actually got quite a few of these, only they were covered up with CGI in post-production in some instances, and in others, they were just shot in a way that I think didn't really use the practical effects to their best strengths. However, with Gareth Edwards now working on this new movie, I think the inclusion of not only these new animatronic effects, but also the CGI referenced by Bailey in this new interview are both elements that will be really fun to discuss. It's like acting opposite a dinosaur. They're great. They're really committed to the moment. What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now, when it comes to animatronic effects, the old school Jurassic Park trilogy from 1993 to 2001 utilized a ton of them. And back then, Stan Winston was on top of his game making some of the most memorable movie monsters imaginable. Now, Jurassic World, the first one, only utilized one Apatosaurus animatronic and Dominion had loads, but that movie didn't really film them convincingly, if you ask me. In fact, it's only Fallen Kingdom that I really think did a decent job at showing the dinosaurs move nicely when you compare J.A. Bayona's directing with what the first trilogy did. But now with Gareth Edwards involved, this should be really interesting because he actually is mostly known for his CGI work. On the movie Monsters, he helped out a lot with doing that kind of stuff on a considerably smaller budget, and he's actually well aware of how things will look and how to make them look convincing. He proved this once again in 2023 with the creation which only had an $80 million budget, and this one's going to be way higher than that. So CGI-wise, I think Gareth Edwards is going to give us one of the best-looking Jurassic Park films, probably since The Lost World. But when it comes to animatronic dinosaurs, I think this is really going to be an area of the movie people take seriously and would love to see what he brings to the franchise himself, because we don't really know which animals are going to be practical just yet. Now, of course, I'm like a lot of other fans, and I gotta say, I would love to see another full-size T-Rex on set interacting with the actors, but I can understand why that may be difficult to accomplish, especially since, if we're being honest with ourselves, they are kind of rushing the production of this one. And look, that goes the same for something like a Spinosaurus. I'd love to see one of those, or other super large animals that may or may not be in the movie. However, when it comes to smaller species, I mean, how cool would it be to see Jurassic World Rebirth give us a practical effects Velociraptor, or maybe even something like the Quetzalcoatlus, which is huge, and it could be done with a lot of wire and puppet effects. Ideas like this really go a long way at showing the audience something we haven't seen before, and just knowing that they will be included in some way, shape, or form from this interview is super cool. Now, as far as the CGI goes, I'm hoping that the filmmakers don't cover up a lot of the practical effects with CGI in post, because while it can be convincing in some situations where you kind of blend both of them together, which is a good idea, and I think they are doing that on Rebirth based off of this interview, I really don't want them to just have a dummy stand-in on set that isn't even designed to move at all, and then totally paint over it with CGI after filming is completed. Still, the inclusion of Gareth Edwards' CGI is a plus in my book because this is the kind of director that actually has a very good idea at what he's doing when he makes a big budgeted monster movie. Jurassic World Rebirth will more than likely need a lot of that due to their usage of water scenes with dinosaur attacks around boats and ships which we've gotten little glimpses of in behind the scenes material. You can't really submerse larger mechanical animatronic elements unless they're extremely complex like the Spinosaurus in Jurassic Park 3. So I can imagine everyone is hard at work making the special and visual effects look as good as they can with what time they've been given. Now as far as what species could realistically be practical in the new film, here's my best guess and I'd love to hear what all of you think in the comments too. So I'm going to assume at least one raptor. I don't know if it would be an animatronic effect but it would be practical in some way. Maybe a full-size rig for either a sauropod or even a predatory dinosaur. Hopefully Spinosaurus or T-Rex, but I'm guessing if it had to be one or the other, it would be the Rex. As far as a sauropod goes, you've got loads to choose from. Apatosaurus, Mamenchisaurus, Brachiosaurus, anything like that would be really cool to see in the new film. And then one thing I know of for a fact that's going to be practical in the new movie, it's no real inside information or anything, just this makes the most sense. It's the easiest 
is to do, and that's going to be little baby dinosaurs. In Jurassic World Dominion, we got loads of small animals inside of cages, and you even got like Dimorphodons being handled by people sitting on their arms and stuff. So I think that the idea of the more smaller species being practical in Jurassic World Rebirth, that's a no-brainer, especially because these don't necessarily even have to be animatronic in design and could just be puppeteered with wire effects like the Compsognathus were in the Lost World Jurassic Park or even the little Pteranodons in the nest from JP3. But when it comes to the full-size animatronic effects, I really do think it's great that they're still using them in the new movie. I just hope they're filmed properly Properly to the best extent of their abilities. And I'm confident smaller species like the Microceratus or even something a little bit bigger like a Dimetrodon can be used for the new film if the script calls for them to show up. One thing I will say, and I'm literally just thinking about this while I'm making the video, it really would be cool to get a full-size Quetzalcoatlus animatronic. I don't know how you would do it, but that sounds like something impressive and really cool for the Jurassic Park brand to tackle. Imagine having stunt actors get picked up up in its beak and flung about or dropped, kind of like what they had the male and female parent T-Rexes do in The Lost World. Maybe even do something elaborate for when it opens its wings like Vermithrax from Dragon Slayer. Of course, that was go motion, but hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions on the animatronics in the new movie happen to be, I'd love to hear all about them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I want to thank everyone that's helped me build my channel over the years. I'd also like to thank every one of you guys who've watched my stuff. You've all been extremely cool to me. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like and hope that you'll consider subscribing. God bless you all. Christ is King. See you guys in the next video. And as always, take it easy.